Thank you, Christine. Um, okay, I, I know a lot of people know about Milton Keynes, and there are a lot of architects and planners in the room, and um, I wouldn't do justice um, in talking about uh, the design and architecture of Milton Keynes in 10 minutes. Um, I want to focus today on the cultural uh, elements of Milton Keynes um, and how, ha as a heritage officer, um, responsible for delivering the Heritage Museums and Archives strategy for the city, how culture-led development um, can help both the regeneration of the old parts of Milton Keynes, which are 30, 40 years old, but we're still part of a growth agenda, we're still growing, so how culture can help lead that new growth and development um, over the, the next 50 years, we hope. Um, I'm sure you're, most of you will be aware of, of Milton Keynes, and this is the original uh, master plan uh, from the 1970s, um, designed in a way that separate zoning uh, spread out across the, the city area of um, 89 square kilometres, uh, a grid road system, um, which naturally follows the contours of the landscape, so it's not, not rigid in terms of um, uh, the, the vertical and horizontal. Uh, the central Milton Keynes, the city centre, is the big orange bit in the middle. Um, and as you can see, lots of green parks and open spaces, uh, talks of uh, waterways, linear parks, which, which we've heard. That was built into Milton Keynes from the very beginning. 20% uh, of our land use is protected parks and open spaces. Um, even the roads themselves have a designated eight-metre wildlife corridor on either side where building cannot, cannot happen. Um, so that was uh, the, the forethought right at the very start of um, developing Milton Keynes. Uh, industrial zoning spread out as well. So potentially no rush hour in Milton Keynes because this was built for, for the car. Um, we now do have a rush hour, so that is one of the challenges that, 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 we, that we do have. Um, but also uh, low density in terms of housing. Um, even today, uh, Milton Keynes is the 35th largest um, settlement in the UK, but in terms of density of housing is ranked 53rd. It is very low density. Uh, London, as you might expect, is the highest density and covers the top 20 places with about 10,000 uh, people per square kilometre. Manchester, Birmingham, 4,000 people per square kilometre. Uh, Milton Keynes is 843 people per square kilometre. So you can see, although it's a city, it's very much bringing the rural element across it as well. Um, and it was always set up to be a city. Um, unlike um, other new towns, we don't have a mother city. Um, our mother city is London, in a way. It's uh, 30 minutes by public transport, uh, which, from a business pers perspective, makes it um, a very um, uh, interesting and attractive place to be. Thank you. Um, so that is um, what people um, prefer um, in terms of, of Milton Keynes, in terms of its current quality of life. Um, but what we must um, remember is Milton Keynes uh, was created um, where there were existing settlements already. Um, and there were historic towns there, um, some of them important. So Wolverton, for instance, um, we heard about um, the railway earlier from, from another new town. Uh, that was created because the, the engines leaving London couldn't make it to Birmingham. They had to stop somewhere. So in 1837, um, Wolverton was the Nakuru of the time. Um, so that was created. So that, that's got its own very distinctive identity. Uh, coaching towns on the old Roman road, the Watling Street, um, and the 13 historic villages, um, which, as Soren said with, with Ving, um, have buffer zones around them. So again, no development. So if you're stood in one of those historic villages, it will feel like a village. Um, you're, these are all photos from within the city area. Um, but you've got lakes, you've got canals, you've got mansions, 18th century mansions, um, and of course you've got medieval churches and better still pubs. So, um, so yeah, so this, this is the idyll, which is Milton Keynes, and this is why it's so successful and popular to live. Um, but people think of Milton Keynes in, in business terms, in terms of that modern identity, um, the glass, the steel, um, potentially the Open University, which was the first of the big 
organizations to, to move to Milton Keynes in 1969. Um, and it's a place where we have a lot of multinational companies um, from, uh, from across the world all coming and still wanting to come to Milton Keynes. Uh, Network Rail um, came two years ago um, and that was uh, the place where um, every everywhere from the UK relocated to Milton Keynes, 5,000 new jobs. Um, so that, that is what everyone focuses on, the modern element, the business element, but what about culture? Um, there is this perception that uh, new towns, and indeed Milton Keynes is the same, that it does lack a culture. Um, but like other new towns, we have our cultural infrastructure and we've built it over a period of time. So we built our library in uh, 1981. Um, very successful, one of the top ten library uses in the country, now a listed historic building um, as of last year. Um, so that is very much a cultural focus for us. Um, the first ever um, Peace Pagoda in the Western Hemisphere was built in Milton Keynes. Uh, the first ever multiplex cinema in Europe was built in Milton Keynes. Um, and a city needs a cathedral, we have a tree cathedral. Um, so this was um, one of our horticulturalist design lists based on Norwich Cathedral. Um, and this is where you can have your weddings and ceremonies um, amongst the greenery. Uh, our theatre and gallery um, is one of the most successful theatres outside London. Um, uh, Escape, which is where you can either go um, skiing, indoor skiing, or there's also air kicks where you can do indoor flying. So the, the growth of the leisure and service industry has been mirrored in Milton Keynes and MK Dons. We have a football stadium, which is the top euphorated football stadium, uh, has hosted a number of finals and, of course, Rugby World Cup. Um, so why does this external perception, perception that we uh, lack a culture um, still exist? Well, obviously, if you're a new town you don't, and you're marketing yourself as being modern, you don't want to tell people about your heritage. Um, because you know it, it's not going to sell you the, the business investment. Um, also, um, people only see the very city centre. Most of the people come to the city centre of Milton Keynes, and they see that modern area. They don't get out to see those lakes and and uh, those historic villages, um, and that is something that that we think we we need to try and change. Um, and also, um, cultural visitors, um, they haven't. They go to the large established um, setups like the theatre, like the library, um, and those places aren't connected with each other. So what we have to try and do is, and what we've been doing, is connecting those places and therefore connecting those audiences and building those networks. Um, and um, 50 years on, um, we're 50 next year, um, and after five years of, of trying this, these cultural um, developments, um, we need to make sure that culture now takes centre stage because, yes, people want houses, yes, people want schools, um, they want um, jobs, um, but they also want to have a life. They want a quality of life, and that's really important. Um, so what we've been doing, we, we've had a strategy over the last five to ten years where we've been trying to, to put this in place. Um, this has culminated... Um, in a chance to go for a European capital of culture for the UK. Ha ha, Brexit. Um, <laughs> but I think the interesting thing is that, um, and I've been speaking to my cabinet member, um, is we want to remain a European city. We want to continue. This is, and in a way, a title doesn't matter. It's about the networks. It's about the cultural connections. It's about learning from each other. And, and that is where Milton Keynes wants to go. In a way, we see ourselves more of a European city than a UK one. Um, I think we're received much more positively abroad than in the UK, where some of those negative perceptions of Milton Keynes um, do exist. Um, so now to the future. What, where are we going? Well, the infrastructure is still important. Um, Bletchley Park, I hope, hope you all know of, is where the, the, the breaking of the German codes during World War II um, happened. Um, a, uh, shortened the war by up to two years, uh, experts now think. That is in Milton Keynes, and now a visitor attraction attracting 200,000 people a year and growing. Uh, Milton Keynes Museum, um, I'm responsible for getting £7.5 million together to build our museum. 
Um, I've got five and a half, so if anyone's got deep pockets, then you know, please see me afterwards. And our new art and our art gallery, which was built in 1999, uh, needs expanding because it's been successful. People want to go there. It needs bigger program. Um, but the difference, oh, and sorry, um, bibliotech. Um, I'm very interested in this library here in Almira and in Nisavard. Um, we need to change our, our library. Built in 1981, everyone's using it. You can't get in there. There are no seats left. So we need to build bigger and better, and we need to learn from other new towns in terms of how modern libraries and archives work. Um, but the difference here is it's not just about the infrastructure. It's about the people behind it. It's about those connections. It's about those networks. And this is where we're focusing our cultural efforts in terms of the community well-being, the cultural well-being, that health agenda is really important to us. Uh, Milton Keynes, like other places, is growing in diversity, um, and we need to ensure that those cultures are reflected mainstream in the programming um, of the city. Uh, businesses are still important, and the cultural and creative industries are now growing at a, a huge level in Milton Keynes. 7.5% of all jobs in Milton Keynes are in the cultural sector, and it's the fastest growing sector. Um, and then the visitor economy. Um, we need, we, we're seeing that there are more and more people wanting to come to Milton Keynes, so we need to use those networks um, to work um, better on that. Um, and these are the four areas where we think, the four themes where we think that we're going to look at. Um, we ought to use what we've got, what Michelle said earlier, um, look at what assets we have already. Um, we have our heritage, we have our identity, we have our architecture, of, you know, that sense of place is there in Milton Keynes, um, and we should be expanding on that. Uh, opportunity, um, Harlow, a new town in the UK, sells itself as the sculpture town. Um, they have 100 pieces of public art across, uh, across the town. We have over 250 pieces of public art, so why are we not doing that? Why are we not um, using the assets that we have? Um, we've started in terms of some public art and heritage trails using cycling and walking, and obviously that helps with the health and well-being, but we need to do more. Um, engagement. Um, this is a medieval abbey, which is in Milton Keynes. So um, it's not just about the Newtown story. We've got to think about that whole range of history which Milton Keynes has, the Roman history, the medieval history, and engage both local audiences and people coming to Milton Keynes. And finally, celebration. The big milestone events um, which will get people drawing into the city centre, um, reanimating some of those spaces which sometimes look a little, little sparse and, and unloved. Um, and ensuring that we're having um, big performances involving our, um, our communities so that they're homegrown, they're not just parachuted in um, from, from other places. So that was my presentation. I'm, I'm sorry that's all I had time for, and I'm, I know I'm over as well. So um, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>